Hello, I'm David Swanson and welcome once again to mathswithdavid.com. Today we're looking at a P3 question on numerical solutions and geometry. Specifically, this is a question from the Cambridge International A-Levels 9709 Pure Mathematics 3 paper and it's question 5 from the 2017 summer script. We'll start by reading through the question. The diagram shows a semicircle with centre O, radius R and diameter AB. The point P on its circumference is such that the area of the minor segment on AP is equal to half the area of the minor segment on BP. The angle AOP is X radians. Part 1. Show that X satisfies the equation X equals a third of pi plus sine X. Part 2. Verify by calculation that X lies between 1 and 1 1.5. Part 3. Use an iterative formula based on the equation in part 1 to determine X correct to three decimal places. Give the result of each iteration to five decimal places. Now before solving the question, I think it's worth pointing out that in the examiner's report for this uh, question, it was noted that a third of the candidates didn't attempt the question. I think a lot of people saw the geometry at the start and were scared off. And having not attempted the first part, they didn't attempt the second part, which could be done without attempting the first part. Um, what to say? Well, certainly I think it's fair to say that in, in Western syllabi, algebra is often given pride of place and geometry, uh, particularly this kind of Euclidean geometry, somewhat neglected. So often students don't feel confident with geometry when they come to exams. Um, of course, you have to follow the syllabi that you're given and, uh, and use the textbook that you're, you're given as a guide. But knowledge of some basic uh, geometric formula come in very, very useful and can be called upon at different times. Remember the, the Cambridge A level always expects knowledge of the Cambridge IGCSE. So anything explicitly taught in the Cambridge IGCSE that isn't explicitly taught in the Cambridge A level, you are expected to know. Which is why one of the best study techniques is to go through past examination papers. It's in these past examination papers where you'll see the kind of things most clearly that can be tested on in an exam. So let's go ahead and solve the, the question. So we've got to make this equation uh, x equals a third of pi plus sine x and we've got a semicircle. We can see two sectors. Remember sectors are like pizza slices and we can see two segments shaded in and we're told about a relationship between the two segments. Now really there are three formulae that are going to be very important to us here. Uh, one is the formula for the area of a sector. Now you don't need to explicitly remember this formula because it makes intuitive sense. We know that the area of a circle is pi r squared. So when we have a sector, when we have a pizza slice out of a circle, we just need to think what fraction of that circle are we taking. And we understand the fraction by considering the angle. So if, if a pizza slice has an angle of x, we know that the full circle is 2 pi r, that's the angles in radians of a full circle, 360 degrees is 2 pi r. So the area of a sector is x over 2 pi r times by pi r squared. If we were dealing with degrees, it would be x divided by 360 times by pi r squared. So we need to know that formula for the area of a circle or be able to deduce it from intuitively thinking about the circle. We also needed to know the area of a triangle using the sine rule. Um, again, I think coming from GCSE work. So the area of a triangle using the sine rule is half of AB sine C, where A and B are two sides and C is the enclosed angle. And we also needed to use one trigonometric rule. This trigonometric rule is that the sine of pi minus x is equal to the sine of x. And if you draw a small circle and consider x and consider pi minus x, you can see that based on the definition of sine as the vertical distance uh, above zero, that, that they're equal to each other and that this identity holds. 
So once we had these three identities, it was relatively straightforward to go on and compare the areas of the two segments. So the area of the segment on AP is the area of the sector on AP minus the area of the triangle on AP. So we've got pi r squared times by x over 2 pi minus a half r squared sine x. And if we just clean that up a little bit, uh, we can see we've got r squared in, uh, well, on the left hand side, pi's cancel out, leaving us with x r squared over 2 minus r squared over 2 sine x. And then we can factor out our factor of r squared over 2, giving us r squared over 2 times by x minus sine x. And if we do a similar thing with the area of the segment on BP, we get pi r squared times by pi minus x over 2 pi minus half r squared sine pi minus x. I'm using the fact that this is a semicircle, so the angle across the full semicircle is pi. So if I take off the x that we know is on the left there, we're left with pi minus x. And again, if we simplify that, we've got, with the pi's cancel out, and we've got r squared times by pi minus x over 2, minus r squared over 2 times by sine x. And again, we can factor out the r squared over 2 to give us r squared over 2 times by pi mi minus x minus sine x. Now we're told in the question that the area of the segment on BP is twice the area of the segment on AP. And this is the equation that we're going to write down, that r squared over 2 pi minus x minus sine x from above is equal to 2 times by r squared over 2 times by x minus sine x. Now our r squareds over 2 cancel out and we're left with pi minus x minus sine x is equal to 2x minus 2 sine x. And if we gather our x's together, we've got 3x is equal to pi plus sine x, which directly gives us our, formula, our equation that we were asked for in the question. x is equal to a third times by pi plus sine x. Now the second part of the question, again, a lot of people didn't attempt, very, very straightforward. We just need to substitute 1 in and substitute 1.5 in. And the easiest way is to rearrange this equation to put it equal to 0. So we can rearrange it as pi over 3 plus sine x over 3 minus 1 equals 0. And we're going to try this for 1 and try this for 1.5 and show that 1 gives us a negative answer and 1 gives us a positive answer. So between those answers must be an answer that's equal to 0. This tells us that the, the, the solution, the correct value of x, is somewhere between 1 and 1.5. So if we put 1 in, pi over 3 plus sine of 1 divided by 3 minus 1 is equal to 0 0.328. I'm giving that to three significant figures, which is the typical Cambridge International A levels requirement. And pi over 3 plus sine of 1.5 over 3 minus 1 is equal to minus 0 0.340. So as one is positive and the other is negative, we know that x belongs to the interval from 1 to 1.5. Now the third part, we had to use an iterative process. To a lot of people at A-level, iterative uh, methods is a fairly new area and it's one that teachers aren't always completely comfortable with, so they sometimes go quite quickly with. However, it's a very important process. At university, you use iterative processes a lot. They're used whenever we have an equation that can't be analytically solved. And in, in the real world where we have complicated equations, this is very often the case. And numerical solutions, although it can be seen as a little bit dirty and a little bit... Uh, not exact is a very 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 important part of mathematics so we need to be able to to do it and it's worth taking seriously so numerical methods all we do is we say we've got this equation x is a third of pi plus sine x in this case we're going to say we'll try a value of x on the right hand side of our equation if the value of x were correct it would give us the same value on the left hand side um, if it's if it's not correct it will be away from that value but provided it's converging and that we've been told the equation to use here there's a whole area of mathematics around when uh, an iterative sequence will converge and when it will diverge but in this case we've been told the sequence so we can assume that it's going to converge so we put our x into the right hand side of the equation and whatever is spat out on the left we just then put it into the right hand side of the equation again if you excuse the layman's language so the easiest way to do this, we write it into our calculator 
and then we, we use the answer uh, button on the calculator to make sure we don't have to write it again and again. The calculator will do it automatically for us. So I'm going to tell you what we'll write into the calculator first of all. We'll write brackets 1 divided by 3 close brackets times by open brackets pi, and you should have a pi button on your calculator, plus sine, and we'll put in 1 as our first guess, close brackets, because we know it's in the interval 1 to 1.5. I mean, you could try 1.25 if you, if you wanted in the middle. You'd still get the, the correct answer. Um, but we'll just, just to keep things simple. We'll put 1. And the calculator gives us the answer 1.32769. So we know our, our second guess, our first guess was 1. Our second guess is 1.32769. Now we're going to put that back into the formula. But in terms of the mechanics of doing this, in our calculator, we'll just use our left arrow, go over where we'd written 1, and replace it with 1.32769 making sure we also close the brackets. Sorry, we won't actually write 1.32769. We'll just use the answer button on the calculator. If you put the, the little function answer there, where you had your one, that will automatically pick up that 1.32769. And then you just need to keep hitting your equals answer and it will keep iterating it for you. You don't need to keep writing the formula uh, lots of times. So you press the equals button, you get your next answer is 1.37073. Press the equals button again, you get 1.37388. Notice in the question it asks that each step would be given to five decimal places, so it's important you do that if you don't want to lose marks. Now, it's asked for the final answer to be correct to three decimal places. If we've got 1.3707 and 1.3738, we don't know it to three decimal places yet. It could be 1.371, 1.372, 1 1.373. So we need to go one further. We get 1.37409. Now we've gone far enough because if it's between 1.37388 and 1.37409, it can't be 1.373. It can't be 1.375, so the only possible answer is 1.374, which is the correct answer. Now, if we check the mark scheme, on the first part, they were looking to see if you wrote an equation. And you got a method mark if you wrote an equation that involved the sector formula. It was specifically the sector formula they were interested in. And then you got an accuracy mark if it was the correct equation, however messy it was. If you then simplified it using correct steps without any mistakes in them to get the equation that you were given, then you got a, a third mark, another accuracy mark. In the second part, there were two marks, one for the method mark of substituting the values into the equation and an accuracy mark if you substitute them and got the correct values below and above zero. And in the third part, we got one method mark as long as we did at least one iterative step correctly we got an accuracy mark if we did sufficient iterative steps to justify the answer. So in this case, we had to go as far as 1.37409. And then we got a further accuracy mark for correctly stating the answer as 1.374. So we've already talked a little bit about the examiner's report. Uh, quite strong words from the examiner that a third of the candidates made no attempt at all at the question. Um, it was noted that many candidates didn't know how to find the area of the sector or the, a triangle. Uh, I've already talked a little bit about this. Um, it's, it's difficult when the majority of a course treats algebra and the majority of textbooks are geared towards new calculus techniques uh, with very, very little explicitly taught about geometry. But the Cambridge 9709 syllabus is very clear that anything covered in Cambridge IGCSE, and for that matter, Cambridge Secondary 1 before that, you're expected to know. And these geometrical facts are covered in the IGCSE. So two ways to approach it. One is to go back through the IGCSE books in Eurovision. But my main advice would be to do lots of uh, past papers and to watch lots of these lovely videos in order to make sure that you see what kind of things they, they can throw at you. Um, and then in part three, some people didn't work to the required accuracy. You were told to give each step to five decimal places and that the final answer must be to three decimal places. So it's, of course, obligatory that you do that. OK, well, it's quite a long video, but uh, I hope that's been useful. We've got lots of other Pure Mathematics 3 questions and numerical solution questions on the website and on the YouTube channel. 
Um, we, we try to make sure the website is ordered in a logical fashion so you can pluck out those kind of questions that you're specifically interested in. But if, if you have any difficulty navigating it or if you've got any advice or requirements that it's organised in a slightly different way, do feel free to comment. I won't be uh, angry that uh, you come forward with suggestions. They're all useful in, in updating the website. We'll put links at the end so you can subscribe to the YouTube channel or see a playlist of Pure Mathematics 3 questions. And we hope you look, uh, see other videos. Goodbye.